Good morning. It's Saturday. We are at Malibu uh, working on this plane right behind me. Got in last night, just played around a little bit with uh, some different washing techniques and strategies. I thought I was onto something, but it didn't really work. Uh, let's take a look here. It's a newer plane, I believe it's a 2014. Uh, it's very dusty, it's been sitting in here for a while. Uh, so we're gonna give it a quick no rinse wash here. Um, we got a lot of exhaust on the bottom. So normally we're cleaning the sides of these planes because of the turboprop exhaust. This one, this, this is basically a piston powered PA46. Um, so all the mess comes out the bottom and also because it's burning leaded fuel instead of jet fuel, um, it's a very different type of staining. So check this out. So here's the exhaust. This is what leaded fuel exhaust looks like. See that? And then it, it kind of hazes off on the side and you can see where water is kind of run down and, um, you know, taking it off a little bit. But this runs all the way to the back. And this, this is actually really hard to clean. So if we just took straight citrus to it, um, it would eventually come off, but it, it, it's coming off because we're scrubbing. It's not coming off because we're being chemically smart. Um, and usually what I, what I end up doing is I just end up buffing it, just mechanically remove it. But that's a lot of work and you make a big mess um, on your pads. So um, I was looking at different ways to do this and I went from this to this. All through chemistry. So there, there, there's no scrubbing involved in this process. We're just using our brains, using science. So a lot of this stuff is kind of powdery, um, and, and that'll come off with just a little bit of no rinse. It's really more that hard film that we're worried about. Okay, so there's kind of what the quick no rinse will do still pretty dirty. Now we use our magic solution of science and wipe it on. Let it sit a little bit. We're actually converting the lead to a different compound that's going to come off a lot easier. close up. Agitate it a little bit more. Then it's coming right off. And I want to point out, I'm not really exerting myself that much here. Usually I'm on my back scrubbing and then buffing. So now we're going to take the no rinse again. We're just gonna wipe it right off. And keep in mind, no, no rinse is just water. It, it, it's water with some polymers that like to surround things and encapsulate them. If you've ever done this before, you know how hard this is. Correction is going well. The left hand side is done. Uh, top of the wing is done. I'm gonna do a two step paint correction on the black um, just because it, it's soft enough where it's hologramming a little bit. Um, so the, the second step is just gonna finish it down and make sure there's no holograms in there. For, for a detailer to leave behind holograms is like gear up landing. It's really embarrassing and really doesn't need to happen. So. Um, we're going to continue paint correction on it and hopefully by the end of the night, again me and predictions, hopefully by the end of the night this thing is entirely paint corrected 
and uh, ready for coating tomorrow because coating one of these takes about six to eight hours. This whole side is polished. The black still has to get its second step, but I do have a little test area I want to show you. So on the door here, let's see, see all those scratches? Just washing marks, drying marks, you know, the usual. Um, here's after. Before. After. You can really see that red metallic uh, start to come out. So, beautiful color. I'm going to continue paint correction on it, uh, working on the right hand side, get the wings, get the underside, and uh, get ready to coat. It is 11 o'clock, just came back from a little break. Things have gone well. Not usually what happens, um, but, but things have gone well. So the goal was to get all paint correction done tonight. Um, that, that's actually happening, so let, let's take a look. The fuselage is entirely paint corrected. Um, the tops of the wings are polished. The vertical stabilizer is done. Horizontal up and down is done. All that's left is the underside of the wings. So top side's very shiny. Um, so underside, the wing has to be paint corrected and then um, on both sides. Then the fuselage, like I mentioned, because it's a little bit softer, I'm worried about leaving behind holograms. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a second polish step on it with a dual action machine. Just, just to make sure I'm not putting any holograms in. Um, I'm gonna get cranking on the underside of the wings while I have a little caffeine boost. Once that's done, um, get the dual action on the black and then uh, probably wipe it down tomorrow, start coating, and uh, hopefully get out of here. Actually, we I'm pretty sure we're doing the leather as well. And this is a pretty new interior, but there's still room for improvement. So I, I'm excited to show you that even on really new seats, um, th th there's always room for improvement. This is the newer style seat. You can see, you know, it looks pretty good, but as we swing around, see that color difference? I hope to make this look like that again. And you see how shiny this is? This is all just oils and like, you know, hand stuff getting on there. Um, same on the sides, like you can see there's, see how inside of that crease is lighter? Because that doesn't get rubbed on as much when it's creased, so. I uh, should be able to show an improvement on that as well. Just have to double check and make sure uh, leather's option. You can see a lot of wear, um, or not even wear, it's just staining on the bolster. You can see there's a little bit of wear through right there. But. It is 11.51 and I'm done with paint correction on the other side. Um, made some pretty good progress. 
There's uh, just a little bit of paint correction left doing the dual action step on the black to make sure I'm not leaving behind any holograms. But I, I don't think that'll take too terribly long. I might actually get a decent amount of sleep. So gonna get back to work, change tools, and uh, I'll keep you updated. All right, day two. Got a lot done last night. I even started alcohol wiping part of the plane, uh, the underside of the wings. So I'm gonna continue that this morning and uh, do another final inspection, make sure we don't have any holograms or paint defects. And once that's done, coating time. It's about six o'clock. I'm gonna get started on the interior, um, which is luckily taken out of the plane for the most part, so it'll be a little easier to work on. And then once I'm done with that, we'll get some beauty shots of the plane, pack up, and start the four hour drive home. I do wanna point out that the reason I didn't fly is because I thought it was gonna be IFR. Beautiful VFR weather all day long, but that's what happens. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> Before, after, before, after. See that line right there? These seats are in pretty good shape too. So you don't think that they need cleaning, but they do, they always do. So this is what the leather coating looks like. Um, as we talked about before, modern leather is basically covered in a polyurethane top coat. And sometimes that wears off. Sometimes it's just not the greatest. So what we're doing is we're basically adding a ceramic layer on top of it. So it's a liquid, it gets applied, it bonds to the substrate, and it forms a much more resilient coating. Uh, so stains and just like blue dye, blue, excuse me, blue jean dye, um, all that stuff will have a lot harder time sticking to these seats and cleanup becomes a lot easier as well. So instead of scrubbing and kind of doing that whole process that I showed you before, just a damp microfiber towel will get these seats nice and clean, especially if you kind of stick with it. Um, you can see that they're turning a little bit shiny right now as the coating's going on. It actually, um, as it cures, it's gonna go back to the factory matte finish. So it, it, it's not gonna turn your seats shiny. Shiny seats is not a good thing. Like, don't put armor all on your seats to make them look shiny. That's not desirable. That, that's not how it's supposed to look, so. Um, I'll, I'll show you on this other seat a before and after and you can see what it ends up looking like once it's cured. So this half is coated, this half is not coated. See how they look the same? Let me get it wet. So you see how the water on this side is staying on top? On this side it's kind of soaking in. See that difference? So what this coating does is it, it keeps the staining on top so, so it doesn't soak in. So if you spill coffee, that coffee is gonna sit on top of the leather instead of soaking in like the water is here. Uh, it's a pretty dramatic difference because this, this whole panel isn't coated, the rest of it is coated. Um, it's gonna help a little bit with abrasion as well. So you're abrading the coating instead of abrading the, the actual substrate. Um, especially, you know, up here we, we see a lot of wear and tear, so we like to 
Put a nice thick layer on there as well. Since we mostly work on the same airplanes over and over again, um, you know, we can see what these age like in the future. So this is a very common wear point on, on these because you got to squeeze in to get to the flight deck. So by anticipating where the wear and tear is going to happen, we can put extra protection there. Cool. Interior is done even though it's completely torn apart, but that's not my doing. Plane is done. There's just a big mess here that I'm gonna clean up, but um, I, I'm excited. This turned out to be a really nice job. It's a little late, so it's like, it's 9.30, I got a four hour drive. So I don't really wanna leave now. Um, I'm gonna clean up, get the beauty shots off of this, and then um, since I have a number of coated airplane in here, I just want to show you after we do all this, how those have aged. So that, that'll be like the bonus features of this episode. Done. Of course it looks really good, being that it's been coated for all of six hours. Um, it just so happens there's actually another plane here that I coated two or three years ago. I'll, I'll look it up and I'll, I'll put it in the notes like here. Um, I want to show you what that looks like. So this Meridian, you know how dirty Meridians get, especially on the sides. And like it, it feels slick still. Um, I kind of did a little test wash on a spot to see how it cleans up and it cleans up really nicely too. Um, it, it's smooth, it's white, most importantly. Um, we're not seeing any permanent staining. Like the underside of this is just pristine. A contributing factor to the success of that one, um, I, I took the time to teach their detailer how to use the no rinse wash method. So I, I'd rather them not go to town on it with a buffer because that would, you know, take the coating off. So I, I took the time, showed them how to use the no rinse, gave them a big bottle of it, some towels, and you can see, you know, pays for itself. The coating's still in great shape. We are underneath a jet prop, and um, I wanna show you this oil. So you see this kinda oil slick coming off of it? See that? Let's go take a look at one that I coated. So same, same engine, they're, they're both gonna be jet props. Shiny, as is this one. So the owner just got in, just wiped down the side real quick to get the exhaust off, and you can see it pretty much looks detailed. Um, it's really very easy, but looking at the exact same place down here, um, so you see how on this coated surface, you know, we just have nice little droplets of oil. It's not forming that flat film. It, it, it's really beading, so it's beading turbine oil. Uh, let me show you how this is going to come off. So we're going to attempt this with just no rinse. Um, 1 to 20 dilution. Again, it's mostly water. It's, it's not really a degreaser. We're going to spray some on here. And then I'm going to take microfiber towel, spray just a little bit on there. Um, actually, I'm going to take one that's already wet. So spray some no rinse on there. Now we're gonna take our wet microfiber towel and we're just gonna see what it does. So all the oil came off. Because the coating is so repellent, we didn't really need a uh, degreaser. Just gonna wipe that up. 
And then we're gonna use our dryer microfiber towel to dry it off. And we're good to go. So this is right where the tire sprays up mud and um, just dirty water. So we're just gonna spray some no rinse on it. And for this one, we're gonna let it sit just a little bit. So you can see there's very small droplets where the paint is clean. But then where the paint's dirty because there's no coating there, um, the, the water gravitates towards that. So it's, it's gonna start, uh, you know, ba basically, it's selectively seeking out the dirt and it's starting to dissolve it. Then we take our damp microfiber towel, just in a straight line with really light pressure. Just go over it. And get the big stuff off. And then if there's more surface contamination, we'll just spray it down again and uh, get a cleaner towel or, or you know, rinse out this towel and come back. There we go. Dry it off with your plush uh, dry towel. And we're back in business. For general cleaning, dusting, um, same thing, just spray on some no rinse. And then uh, take your microfiber towel, just wipe it off. You wouldn't want to use this much water. I'm really just doing this to show the beading. And again, th this was done a few months ago. I, I don't know exactly how many hours he has on it, but imagine that being rain while you're going very fast. Um, you know, the plane's basically gonna wash itself. It's 11.49. Everything's packed up, beauty shots are done. I'm gonna go get some sleep and leave early in the morning to go back home. Um, on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday, flying to Colorado Springs to attend a convention of all of these planes owners. So that's the Mopa convention. So very excited about that. Till then, good night.